Hey guys, wanted to do a knife video for you today. Um, this is a knife I've had for, uh, I want to say around 10 years, maybe a little more. Um, anybody that's familiar with knives probably knows what this is. Um, as far as what brand it is and where it's uh, come from, that's something I can help you with. This is a Gurkha knife. This is a Kukri. Um, and this is actually one of the Gurkha issued knives. This is a service number one knife is the model. Um, this is actually issued to the British Gurkhas uh, when they enlist. They keep this knife for their entire career. They inscribe their number on it. Um, I love this knife. As you can see by the condition of the sheath, I have loved using this knife. Now, I was given this knife. Uh, my father brought this back for me. He's in the service, or was in the service, since retired. Um, brought this back for me from Nepal. This was handmade in Nepal at the Gurkha house. At, sorry, at the Kukri house, my bad. Um, essentially, it takes four workers a full day to pound one of these out, uh, and they're pounding them out by hand. They use old surplus Indian truck leaf springs to make these knives. And uh, yeah, they're, they're epic. The uh, amazing thing was, and I, I talked to my wife for a good long time before I actually took this into the woods with me about uh, do I use this knife or do I call this a, a shelf knife, put it up on a nice display and show it off to people that walk in the door and how nice and shiny it is. Uh, of course, at the time when it was given to me, I didn't know uh, as much as I do now about the Kukri House or about the pricing on them or anything like that. I just knew it was a very impressive, heavy duty, beautiful knife. Now they make much more intricate designs than this. They make fancier ones. This is the service model. This is the, the legitimate, if you're going to own a, a, a Kukri, you want this one because it's the ones the Gurkhas use. So that, that was very impressive to me. I, I didn't need anything fancy or shiny or, or uh, with little carvings and all that kind of stuff. Having the real thing was, was much more uh, attractive to me. Um, this one in particular, uh, I looked today. Uh, I'd never actually looked for a price on it before because it didn't matter. Um, I was happy to have it no matter what it costs. But for the sake of the video, I looked it up. This thing is thirty nine ninety nine US plus shipping coming straight from Nepal. The value on this knife is ridiculous. This is the most rugged knife I've ever owned. I've used this thing as a hatchet. It's it's an amazing chopper. Now I realize this is, you know, this is a fighting knife, but it, it fills so many roles. It's ridiculous as far as a woods knife goes. Um, so just a little bit about the knife. The blade length on this is, sorry, handle length on this is five inches. I was looking at a sheet of paper and uh, looking at the entirely wrong measurement. It didn't feel right. So, uh, yeah, handle is five inches. Blade on this is ten and a half inches overall. 15 and a half inches and that is essentially longest point to longest point is, is where the 15 and a half inches come in of course it's a curved blade so how you're supposed to measure that i'm not sure i just took a tape to it um they get really specific with the rockwell hardness on this thing they're telling me on their site and uh they, they must have it down to a science the spine of the knife is 22 to 25 rockwell the belly is 45 to 46 rockwell and the edge is 54 to 55. So they're, they're very specific about how they've tempered this, uh, this blade. Um, they're calling this high carbon processed stainless or high, I'll have to, I'll, I'll put the, the exact verbiage in the notes below. I, I'm not sure exactly what the steel, well, it's leaf spring steel is what it is, right? So, um, let's crack it open here. This thing is a beast. Now, you can see it is well used. I oil it. I try to keep it in good shape. 
but I've had this thing in the woods with me, cutting through trees, cutting off branches, getting sap all over it, chucking through the woods. Um, I put some good use into it, so it's definitely not as pristine as it was when I got it. Um, and as usual, I'm okay with that. Um, like I said, I, I started to say earlier, I, I wanted to know whether I should take this out and pound on it and, uh, and use it or if I should leave it in pristine condition. Um, I am not some conspiracy theorist. I'm not telling anybody the world's going to end tomorrow. Um, I am a believer that why wouldn't you be prepared for something uh, when it doesn't cause any issues? It's not a bad thing to be prepared for any type of situation um, when it's not hurting anybody. So my thoughts were if anything ever went wrong in society, let's say, here's an example. I live fairly close to a nuclear power plant. Um, maybe something goes wrong with it can't stay around here anymore. I have to go through the woods to get wherever. Uh, pure, purely hypo hypothetical situation. The chances of that happening in my head are, are very slim. But if I have to grab a knife, I wanted to grab this one. But what I didn't want is to get out in the woods when I really need it and have it go wrong on me. Have it break, have it you know, chip out, or ha have it be a useless tool all of a sudden. Um, when I was going to depend on it. So, uh, after talking to my wife, like I said about it, and and considering, am I insulting the person who bought it for me? I'm a firm believer in using my tools. Uh, I say as intended, I'm not a Gurkha. I, I, I'm not going to be fighting with this knife. I'm not going to be using it for any type of special military uh, application. But it's a big-ass knife definitely could be used as a survival blade. If you look at the back of the spine, it's it's ridiculous. Like I said, this is a 3 8 inch thick. Let me find a pencil here. There, just as an example, there's just a regular, this is tiny, regular HB number two pencil. You could fit two of them on the back of that spine. Let me go to the other side of it there. Nowhere near as thick. This thing chops pretty much like a hatchet. It's got so much forward weight on it. Uh, it's awesome. Really nice. Uh, the edge, I've had this in the witch. I have never put a sharpener on this edge, and you could still shave with it. Um, of course, it has the kukri design has the blood drip on it, keep it off your hands, brass fittings, both ends of the handle. Uh, this is a water buffalo bone for a handle. This is water buffalo hide on the sheath. And this is the same sheath that they issue to the Gurkhas. Uh, dual belt hoops and it actually holds the knife nicely off of your hip when you're wearing it. And it also comes with these two little uh, accessories, I guess. This is a sharpener. As you can see, it's dull. There's no, there's no sharp edge at all there. That's for sharpening your kukri. And it also comes with a little skinning knife that does have a nice edge on it. Of course, these have water buffalo bones as well for their handles. Something on that one. There we go. So as a whole, that's what you get in the kit. Um, and like I said, for the matter of $40 American plus shipping. Now, I didn't go through the checkout to see what shipping would cost to, to get it overseas. But I can't imagine buying a more solid knife Um for that money. You go out and spend $50 on a Becker or a K-Bar or any these brands. I'm not talking about a KR or K-Bar USMC leather handle. I'm talking what you can get for $40. So, 
So whatever these common lines that we usually see over here would sell you for $40 is not going to be anywhere near the quality of this. The weight of it, the feel, none of it. You're not going to come close. I've never seen a knife for that price be so solid. Um, so yeah, I've had this out. Now, I don't have any video of me hard using it. Um, when I was out, it was just, uh, and another reason why it doesn't look quite as clean as I should have it. I was out on multi-day, uh, essentially survival camping scenario, throw a backpack on, walk into the woods for a few days. Um, didn't take oil with me. Got lots of sap and moisture and everything else on it. So it's, it's not perfect. It's tarnished. It's got some, uh, I could probably get it buffed, but it kind of adds half the character for me to uh, to know that it's been well used. Um, you can actually still see, I don't know if I can get it on camera, there he is, uh, along the front edge of the blade there, you can still see the tooling marks from when they grind it down. Um, that's all hand done in Nepal. I, I'm... You know, it adds character. Could they have buffed it up more? Yeah, they could have. Uh, the one my sister got at the same time as as me was uh, a little fancier. And, of course, my dad knows me. I, I wouldn't have expected to get the fancy one. I would expect he'd get me the authentic military version, the rugged one. And that's that's great. That's exactly what I the decision I would have expected him to come across. Um, for my needs, but hers, it's it's nice. It's nicely buffed polished it's it's pretty it's still rugged i mean i don't think anything those guys make over there are going to be cheap uh cheap feeling but uh, i may order another one sometime just to just to have a second one um for the price you you can't go wrong but uh yeah if, if you got any questions guys uh definitely feel free as usual to post down in the comments below or send me a message uh, i'm glad to answer anything i can for you um I'll also put the link to the website of the Kukri store um, where this came from uh, down in the description uh, in case you guys want to check it out. Again, this particular model is the service number one. So service NO.1 is the way they have it listed. Um, awesome, awesome knife. I would highly recommend it. Uh, I've pounded with this thing. Uh, I haven't done any, done any batoning with it, but I've done chopping with it. Uh, essentially substituted a, a hatchet for this. Uh, so I'm, I'm very impressed. Very nice knife. And uh, highly recommended. Alright, have a great day guys.